What is happening? Thanks for coming to the Vinnie Van channel. I am your, I'm your host, that Vinnie Van guy, just FYI. Um, get some of that calf exercise, walking in sand. You know, we gotta exercise them calves out. It's the most important thing, good calves. No, it definitely is a butte. I'm here by the lake. The beautiful Lake Coeur d'Alene. Lake Coeur d'Alene, so gorgeous. It's such a beautiful day. Now that the clouds have come off, now that the clouds have come off of the, uh, the sun and has uncovered the sunlight. It is fantastical. I just love it. It is something. So the last time we did this, I'm not sure if I posted that video, I don't know. I record videos and sometimes I'm like, no, I'm just not gonna share that. But I was down here and there I passed these young ladies that were sitting down there on the wall and um, they were fine. I passed them out, it was like five minutes, I was all the way down here. And then I hear the screaming and I see they're running after each other and they're coming toward me and I'm like, great. You know, doing videos sometimes is hard because folk, they're not thinking about your space or like what you're doing. Look at that, isn't that pretty? The rocks right in the clear water. I love that. I love it. But anyway, they were screaming, yelling, ah! <laughs> chasing each other. Uh, it's okay. It was fine. I was just like, great, I was heading where I'm heading right now. And they just ran right past me. And they headed right where I was headed, this little private, this little quiet cove. And uh, I was like, okay, you take it then. I'll, uh, I'll just lay back over here, do my dumb video. Anyway, all is well in Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene is, I mean, Every time I turn around, there's a video popping up on YouTube and somebody's talking about bucket list places and they're in Idaho. There's so much in Idaho, it's insane. And so there's my dilemma. I love Coeur d'Alene. I've always loved Coeur d'Alene. I've been a fan of this area for closing in on 30 years. I originally came here with my buddy where I'm staying now using their driveway. I moved I moved him and his family down here as you know. And um wow. Quick look before I finish my story. Beautiful tree stump unearthed selfie side it's not as good but this is the little cove or the little, I don't even know what you'd call it but it's so pretty here anyway I've always loved my Coeur d'Alene always dreamed of being here coming here but it seems like nobody else ever did like I was married and she didn't want to do it we ended up not coming here <laughs> And then I find myself, you know, single again. And I thought, I'm gonna go out on the road, I'm gonna do the van life, and I'm gonna, I'm going to end up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And if I'm gonna work somewhere, that'll be where I work. I can just settle in to this beautiful place. And um, that's what I did. This used to be some kind of a dock. You can see, yeah, total dock all the way down. I was wondering about that. So the dock was all the way across. This lake used to fill in all this, but it has shrunk. Look at that house. Oh boy, oh boy. Um, yeah, so 
My surroundings are awesome. And uh, so we never did make it here. We did go to Boise and we chose Boise because it was a bigger population. It was much more people. We thought more people, more chance of having a barbershop really take off. And, and then I had this dream and I felt like it was God talking to me and I still haven't figured it out. So I don't even know, but it was a dream. It was very vivid and it was me and God was talking to me and he was saying, it's not about a barber shop. It's not about a barber shop. And he was telling me this. And then I woke up and the words came out of my mouth. It's not about a barber shop. And I never remember my dreams ever, ever. Very seldom do I remember my dreams. And for years and years and years and years and years, there's such a thing for me. <laughs> um, dreams, I didn't dream. Not only didn't I dream at night when I was sleeping, but I didn't have dreams. I kind of just lost, was it hope? Not really hope, but just, I got kind of uh, hardened by life and, and was in a bad spot. And so I just wasn't even, I wasn't even dreaming. Ah, be quiet. It's awesome. I feel like I'm back at the ocean. Oh, that was a good feeling. But I didn't dream. I didn't dream at all. I wasn't dreaming. And then after the divorce, I, uh, you know, you go through the ups and downs and the loneliness and the, what am I going to do now? And where do I belong? And who am I? And uh, that's when van life kind of, kind of popped in my head. I could do it, I thought. I could do van life. <laughs> so that's why when I realized there were people like Mav and Van City Van Life and other folks actually making enough money on YouTube to go and just live their life and you know do van life, which basically for me represented getting back to the dream state, you know? And um, feeling like I had something that I was doing, had goals, had uh, just dreams again, you know? And um, so van life represented me kind of returning to, to Vinny Van, you know? Returning to being myself being um, creative and free because I felt free. I mean, I was free. I was not happy about the divorce. I didn't want a divorce. I just wanted things to get better. And, um, and I didn't choose divorce, just FYI. That had nothing to do with my choice. I asked not for that to not happen. And uh, so, you know, there's two of us and one person chose to keep going. And so that put me in a position of, okay, what am I gonna do to make choices, you know? I'm trying to get all personal. I'm just trying to say, there's a reason I chose van life. And not because I wanted to live in a van. It didn't sound terrible, <laughs> to tell you the truth. It sounded actually fun, I thought. Okay, but how do I travel? How am I going to afford to travel? Here I am used to, you know, pulling in some really good money. But fan life, when that, when I saw that, I was like, I can totally do fan life now. I had some money saved and I was making good money finally reopening the shop after COVID. And uh, I started watching YouTube and trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do. How can I afford a Sprinter? I can't. I don't want to get into debt. I thought going out on the road with all the life bills, like insurance and food and gas and, you know, wear and tear on the vehicle. I need a lot of money to go van life and, and I just didn't have that. So when they took the truck, 
a good thing about it was, okay, now let's figure out how to stay out of debt and let's do something new and different. I never picture myself driving a minivan. Obviously, anyone who knows me will tell you, you're not a minivan type. And, uh, but what type am I? You know what type I am? I'm the type that'll do anything to get to a point to fulfill a goal, to finish something, to do it, to make it happen. So I got to looking and I found a few people that had Toyota Siennas. So I was like, okay, how much are Toyota Siennas? And I found them for, you know, like old ones for a few thousand dollars. But I thought I need something newer, something that looks good, something that runs primo. And I found this beautiful little van. I bought it, 6,000 bucks. But I ended up putting a bunch of money, fixing a bunch of stuff, doing all the things that looking back, I might not have needed to do really. The good news is all that money is in it. All that money helped it be a stronger, newer vehicle. I'm still doing some little things to it just to get the everything correct. But uh, here I am in Coeur d'Alene. Just tell you that all that being said, my favorite saying of all time. That being said, um, I am in Coeur d'Alene. My mother is still in Texas. My daughter is in Texas. My grandsons, two of them, one and three, are in Texas. And so, me settling and moving and staying here, laying down roots in this beautiful area. I can't wrap my brain around it. I can't get to a place where I feel like, you know what? And I tried, trust me, I've looked into some rentals, this really cool space that I can get for 500 bucks. The guy said, you can do whatever you're in there. You can build a loft. There's no toilet, there's water and electricity. So I could have my own space, my own podcast, my own YouTube studio, photography, do everything I want in there for 500 bucks a month. But let me just say that when I left to do, to do van life, I had absolutely no intention on moving anywhere. This was van life, this is travel. This is me living in the van wherever I want, not, oh, this is gorgeous and I have a good job. Let's get a place to live. That was never my idea. My idea has always been to do van life and to build a YouTube channel. That was my dream. And I know I could do it. I know I could do it. I know that I've been thinking just too much about my age and how many years it's going to take off of me living in a small van and doing the things that I want to do in that, in that way. But uh, I'm kind of coming back around because, you know, when you get a job and you're doing well and you got, you're getting money and you're not broke again, that feels good. You know what I'm saying? And right now, you know, I don't talk about my dental health, but I have inherited a lovely set of teeth. Not. My mom had her teeth pulled out and had dentures at 18. She said she was smoking, drinking, and dancing the same night. No painkiller. <laughs> she's a tough one. But she's very healthy. She's 81, turning 82 this year, and takes one tablet, which is a very small thyroid thing. And other than that, she's fine. She's on a plant-based diet. She does really well, very healthy. She's gonna live to be 150, <laughs> I'm telling you. What I'm saying is, it has always been my dream to do this, but I've had things like my teeth. Obviously, sometimes you will see it. It's the elephant in the room. It's the thing I don't talk about. I used to be a lead singer. I used to do a lot of things when I had a grill. I don't do any of those things anymore because of the lack of grillage. It's a, it's a, it's a thing that makes you feel just terrible. And it's hard on your psyche. It's hard to, it's taken its toll on me as far as just my confidence, especially when I make videos and stuff. So, if you're wondering what's happening, it's a, it just started happening. My teeth started exploding on me at one point. All the stupid 
silver fillings started breaking my teeth off. Wow. So I'm saying is just like, I'm working on that. I feel like if I can get that done, then I have a better opportunity out there to really make things go in my life. I want to get back out. I'm going to get back out and doing the van life and, um, you know, figuring out if I've got to work in another city, great. But I don't want to get to where, you know, I'm just doing barbering and I'm not doing what I dream of. I'm not following through. And I do want to follow through with this channel. But I'm going to do it casually. I'm going to put this channel in its rightful place in my life. It can't be number one because God's number one. I'm second. And uh, I have to follow my heart, my the spirit inside of me. It's telling me, you know, get healthy. So I'm going to try to fix my teeth up and get that going, wouldn't that be great? Say a prayer for your guy of any van. And uh, I'm doing my due diligence. I'm trying to get this thing to where I'm taking care of the, my responsibilities. And I've fixed the things that are wrong with me. And I will get consistent with these videos. Just wanted to say hi, let you know I, I do think about y'all, all you great subscribers. Just love that people are still watching my channel for whatever reason. If you have any questions about van life, I do have five months on the road and two years experience living out of my van, working a job. So I try to answer your questions as good as possible. And uh, that's that. God bless you guys. I really appreciate you. Thanks so much. Sometimes love is a dancer in the dark Spinning left and twirling through the back door of your heart And every time